I just found a tool that lets you find secrets on any repository on GitHub. Passwords, API keys, SSH keys, and like 700 more types of keys. And the best part is, it doesn't matter whether or not any of these things were deleted or overwritten via another commit. This tool will still find them because of the way that Git works. Anyway, this tool is called Trufflehog, and it's very easy to install and even easier to use. This program is going to be useful for bug bounty hunters, especially if you're savvy enough to automate this, security researchers, or just plain hobbyists who want to learn how these things work. Legally, of course. And today you're going to learn the Trufflehog basics, enough to get you started. Let's go. As always, this is for educational purposes only. I'm not inside and you do anything illegal. Please stay within the confines of the law. All right, so I have my Kali Linux virtual machine here. I'm gonna go ahead and open up the terminal. To install Trufflehog, it's pretty simple. You just go ahead and run your sudo apt update, type in your password. It'll go and update your Kali repositories just so that way you get the most recent version of Trufflehog. Then I'm gonna go ahead and update my packages, if I can type. Now that I've upgraded all my packages, all I have to do now is just install Trufflehog with this command right here. Now, I already have Trufflehog, so this isn't going to do anything for me, but all I have to do now to call it is I'm just going to go ahead and clear the terminal now, and I'm just going to call it. And now you get this super nice looking interface right here. Super easy, just using the arrow keys up and down to decide what I want to do. Now, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take a look at skinning a source with the wizard here. So if I hit enter, I have a number of different options here. Anything that has a money symbol requires the enterprise version, which I don't have. Stuff like Google Drive, SharePoint, Teams, Slack, etc. Now, if you were savvy enough, you could build things that scan with this, but I'm not at that level yet. But right now I'm stuck with Git, GitHub, GitLab, just your file system, an S3 bucket, and some things that I'm not familiar with aside from Docker. Now, I don't have anything prepared here for that, but I know that if I go to GitHub, I can just enter out some of the defaults here. I'm going to go ahead and scan their default uh, repository, just a bunch of test keys that they let you mess with, I'm pretty sure. So I'm going to go ahead and press the arrow key back up, paste that in, go down, hit next. Anyway, JSON output, this is really nice if you're going to pipe it into some other program. I don't need to right now, skip verification. You almost always want this on because what it does is it uses any API keys that it finds and it does a little bit of a call. If that thing responds, then it knows that the API key is valid and it will eliminate a lot of false positives since there are going to be a lot of things that look like API keys but aren't. This helps mitigate that quite a bit. Verified results is the same thing. You just It only returns stuff that is verified. I'm going to go ahead and hit true for that. Just why not? Exclude detectors. I'm not going to lie, I don't know what this is. This virtual machine only has one core, CPU core, attached to it. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit next. And after did all that, it gave me a command that I could have just run from the beginning. But if you don't know that, this is a really helpful tool. And if I just hit enter, it will go ahead and run this command as if I just typed this initially. So this should return only verified API keys, unless it gives me an error that I don't know what it means. It could take a little bit. This is a really small repository. If you go ahead and take a look here. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate that. This is the default repository that was in the gray text that I just copy and pasted back in there. It has a default private key for scan. Some new keys. I know these four letters are the prefix for a lot of AWS keys. A little bit different depending on the kind of API key you have, but I know that's one of them. And let's see if our Truffle Hawk scan is finished. Looks like it has. Look at all of that. Oh my goodness. If you were a security researcher or you were doing bug bounties or you were just checking to see if your own repositories are safe, this tool is amazing for scanning things individually. Now, what if you want to scan them automatically? Well, that requires Truffle Hog Enterprise, which costs money. I don't know how much, but the terminal is fine enough for me. And from what I understand, this scans way more than just the repository. It also scans all of the branches, all of the commit history. So even if you delete something or it shows or it doesn't even show on GitHub anymore, it will still look at the actual Git commit history and take a look at those API keys, as well as tons of other stuff. You know, however many 700 different types of files and secrets that they support scanning for. I'm going to go ahead and see if I can find another test scan repository. Maybe it'll have some better look on GitHub. Man, this is really slow. I might need to allocate a bit more RAM to this. Let's test it on this repository right here. Ooh, lots of stuff to work with. Six years ago, this is perfect. I'm going to go ahead and copy this. Go back to our terminal. Keep in mind the syntax here. We just have Truffle Hog GitHub organization, which I'm going to see if not including that makes the command still work. And then hyphen hyphen repo equals and then only verified. So that's the tag that you apply if you only want verified. Let's try it. Truffle Hog GitHub repo equals control shift v so we're pasting that in hyphen hyphen only verified okay you know what this time i'm going to go ahead and take off only verified i'm just going to leave it at that we're going to see what this returns it returned nothing what happened okay chunks bytes verified secrets unverified secrets 
Okay, so it didn't return any errors, it just didn't return anything at all. I'm going to copy-paste this, go back to the terminal, and I'm just going to run the base command. We're going to scan a source, a GitHub source. We're going to type in glenrun1. That was his name, just like here was Truffle Security. I'm going to go down here, I'm going to paste Truffle Hog Test. So we're going to see if this works now. So let's try this and see if this does anything different. Error fetching repos for org or user. Interesting. I'm wondering if that has something to do with the GitHub API. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make my own repository and I'm going to scan that. Test repo for truffle hog brute force. Let's go ahead and create the repository. And I want to add a file. I'm going to go ahead and copy this word for word and go back to my repository and I'm just going to paste it here. So this is the keys file. Doesn't look like it has any file extension at all. I'm going to copy this because this is my repository and I'm going to see if something comes up here. Back to Truffle Hog. That is my GitHub name, username, and that is my GitHub repository. Let's see if something comes up. Run with defaults. Error. 404 not found. Wait a second. Okay, whatever the issue was, it was with that repository because it found something. Okay, well, that's enough for me. But yeah, this thing will definitely do its job in finding leaked credentials. I could totally see bug bounty hunters going for this when they're looking for passwords or anything like that. You know, I'm going to go ahead and boot this back up because I want to see if there's something I can do automation-wise. I haven't touched any form of bash scripting before this, so this will be the first I ever do anything like this. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and make a new file. I'm going to do that with a terminal because apparently you're supposed to do this. Nano my first bash script. I don't know what file extension to use. Does it matter? Yes, it does. SH. So now we are in the nano text editor. I'm going to go ahead and put this prefix here. We're going to go echo. Hello world. We're going to hit Control o to write out, in other words, save, hit Enter, and we're good now. Control x to quit. Now I'm just going to write my first bash script. That's what we needed. Okay. Now that it's executable and we know it works, we can go ahead and open it with nano again. What happens if we run the trouble hog command? Does this do anything at all? Okay, so it does, and it just prints it straight to the terminal. So I'm going to clear this and try something else now. Oh, but I did forget to put GitHub in there, so this should work now. Oh, well, yeah, I don't know what I was waiting on. This isn't me running Truffle Hog. This doesn't return anything. This is just a script. Maybe I was waiting on something. Anyway, my super simple script works. I'm going to go ahead and try adding another task to it. On top of scanning the test repo, I'm also going to scan my own repo. So I'm going to go ahead and add that really quick. Truffle Hog GitHub org the brute force. Turns out I garbled this. Test repo for Truffle Hog. Save and quit. We're going to try this again. So it's doing stuff right now. This is the first one. Oh, shoot. I did just have to wait a while. Looks like it's still going to. I haven't seen the other thing start yet. Okay. Okay, it finished. We could see because this one started up again. That's the first command line that happened. So it's just going to do this again. Wow. Okay, so this one didn't take anywhere near as long. Man, I am totally making a video in automation and scripting. Oh, I could totally believe that if you combine Truffle Hog with something like any kind of scripting or automation, oh my goodness, you might be able to get some bug downhills on autopilot. A lot of manual work and time you can save yourself. That said, everything in this video is for educational purposes only. Like many other things, you can use this tool for not so good things and not legal things. Don't do that because you will go to prison. But as long as you use this tool within the confines of the law and for ethical reasons, it'll save you a lot of time. And yeah, my next video is definitely going to be about scripting because I can't wait to automate this tool right here. I don't want to pay however much money it is for the Enterprise Edition. So yeah, if you want to see me automate this and what I can do then, hit subscribe.